Hi there once again and welcome to another Expresso Mechanic tutorial. And this is the second and final part in the series on creating a tilting train. In the first tutorial we'd set up our bogies and we'd got them running along our tracks and behaving exactly as they needed to do. And in our second tutorial what we're going to be looking at will be creating the carriages and locos and the platforms that they sit upon and rotate around and then of course making the whole thing work as a tilting train. That's what we're about in this tutorial, so without further ado, let's see if we can make this happen. So I'm gonna hit function two, and let's check where our bogies are now. They're all over here, so we're at frame zero, so that must mean then that the start point for our railway tracks and our, well in fact our splines in general is over here we want it somewhere here so let's change that and we'll do this little bit of housekeeping before we start so we want our center we want our path i'm just holding down my command key to select those so i don't select anything else and now we can just zoom in on these points and just make sure that uh, in fact there you can see that's where the spline ends there so you can see that's where it is if we just come down here we can see that we've got those three selected which is fine that looks like our center our outer and our inner let's just make sure that our path is selected too I'm going to our front view so hit F4 to go there and we can see that our path which is floating above the tracks is selected too so they're all all four are selected that's great so let's just go back into view our top view um, and we'll see what we can do so we'll set our point order so set first point and now our bogies have jumped back see where they are right in fact that's not the point that I want to use as my first point what I want to do is use this point over here so if I select all of those Again, I'm just going to double check for the sake of being sure that I've selected everything correctly. Yes, I have. So that's fine. And I'm going to set that to my first point. And that's fine. Now my bogey's in the correct place. If I just go to where they are, let's just select these. And we can see that they are all in a straight line along along there. That's fine. That looks that all looks good. There we are. That's where they are. Yeah, that's fine. So the rear bogey is over here, and this one will be the front one. And if we hit play, we can see that they are all moving off exactly as we'd like them to. So that's great. That's all set up for us. And we can move on from here and now start thinking about building the locos and the carriages. Right, so I'm going to select B1 and hit O for object so that we zoom in on that rear bogey there. And we can start thinking about building what we need for the rest of the train. The first thing I'm going to do is bring in a cube. And I'm going to transfer that cube to this cylinder. So drop it into here, zero it out. we've got it in the right place now we just need to remove it from there for a second and we'll do some work on the cube just to get it to the right size now its height wants to be about 3.5 Z about 25 and 16 or perhaps a little bit uh, more let's have a look where are we perhaps the X let me just hang on, let's just check to see what's going on here I can just come out of my geometry only. Ah, yeah, okay, what we need to do, we need to rotate this by 90 degrees. So that's what we'll do. We come into our object coordinates, 90 degrees. Yeah, that's exactly right. So that's fine, and we just need to raise this up and position it. Let's just go into our front view again, object. Yeah, that's fine. We'll just sit on top of there. And that's all it needs to do. Now the next thing we need to work on though is the shaping of this because we need to dish this out. What I'm gonna do in order to do that is bring in a circle spline. 
bring that in and again drop it into um oh, in fact I can drop it into the cube this time it doesn't really make a lot of odds let's just bring that up into there it's not quite in the right plane i don't think i'll zero that out we'll manipulate the object just bring it down to a radius that's looking like it might be correct we go into our right hand view hit object move this up to somewhere around here we've got a radius of 12 let's have a look see if that's any good well i don't think it's far off um let's have a look we could do i think that that could work actually i think that's good i like that i think that'll work so a circle there what we're using it as is it's basically a placeholder this is going to be the point of rotation for the carriage um, and we're going to have to bring in another path spline and line it up with the center of this circle that's what we're going to be doing a bit later but for now what we're, we're going to be doing if we get the cube and we'll go into our segments here what we need to do is increase the segments in the X certainly because we want more across here let's just have a look let's see what our display is Gareth lines that should give us what we want let's have a look I'm not actually seeing any lines for some reason in that cube and I don't know why that is it's a bit odd considering we're in garage shaving lines well, I suppose going to wireframe that's better now we can see them okay so we've got let's have a look and see if we've got enough I think we need a couple more let's just go in fact I'm gonna go that far I think 16 and that way we can manipulate this and get a nice shape in there okay so we've got it that far I think we're ready to make it editable actually now so we'll hit C just to make that editable we're in points mode so the next thing is to start manipulating the points and get this to the correct shape so I'm gonna switch off visible only so that I can get both ends just move this one down until it's level with the edge of the circle same with these two and these two and just keep rinsing and repeating until I've got the shape that I want looking good and then just a tiny little bit of movement on that one I think it's only a small amount something like that there we go so that's now the correct shape and we can see that the train or the carriage body or the loco body will be able to rotate as I said around the, around the center of this circle and it will be in the correct place I mean in reality if this was real this they do do this but the point is that there'll be rollers there'll be hidden rollers we won't see this there's no point putting them in but there'll be rollers within this and there would probably be hydraulic rams that would push and pull to actually make the carriages and the locos rotate around this center that's how that works in reality but we don't need to worry so much about that but anyway that's the first little bit of this done so we've got a circle in that's going to act as a center of rotation and we've got this platform put in which is where the carriages and the locos are going to be supported on top of the bogies so that's great that's the first little bit of it done the next thing to do is to rename this p1 for what we said it was going to be a platform so we'll call it p1 i'll also give it a target tag i won't put anything in the target object just at the moment because there's a bit more work to do before we get there i can then drag this into b1 the bogey here so that it's part of that and it's underneath the cylinder and that's fine because we start with the bottom cube we've got a cylinder and then we've got the platform so they're in the correct order not that it really matters but for the sake of clarity I'm just going to arrange it like that I'll open up b2 and I'm going to copy by command dragging 
this into there and then rename that P2. And then what we can do, the golden rule here is that the odd P or the odd platforms need to look at the even platforms and vice versa. But before we start doing that, let's just select this. And in the Z here, this has got to be zeroed out. And if we just zoom out a little bit, we can see this other one. There we go. So we've got our second platform and it's, it's in the correct place. So at the moment, if we just come out of points mode and go into here, we can see that this is facing this way. It actually needs to turn through 180 degrees. And we're going to do that by changing its target object to P1. So if we put that in there straight away, it turns to 180 degrees and it's looking at P1. Similarly with P1, we're going to put P2 in there. Now, we need to repeat this process for all the other bogeys, but rather than sort of bore you with that detail, I'll set that up and then by the power of editing, I'll come back to you and it'll all be done. Just zero that out and it needs to look at P11. And that's it, they're all done. They're all in place. They're all looking in the correct directions at the correct objects and everything should be set up and ready to go. Great, so that's another little section of this taken care of. And we can now think about making our locos and our carriages and getting them in place. In order to do that, I'm gonna start by bringing in a cylinder and I'm gonna drop that cylinder into the circle of P1 and then zero it out. It needs to be orientated plus X. Its radius needs to be, well, actually less than 12. We're gonna make it 11.75 so that it's just shy of 12. 25 in the height, a single height segment and 12 rotation segments is fine. In the caps, I'm just going to add one segment so that we've got two segments there. And that should be fine. We should be able to hit C on the keyboard to make it editable. And we'll just drag it out of the bogies now. And if we just hit O on the keyboard just to zoom in on the object, we can see what we've got. Now, if I just go into my, let's have a look, where are we? Object mode here. Now you can see where it's going to rotate. If we just go to a different view, no thanks, we don't want those. Go to a different view. Now we can see that it's going to be rotating around this axis. And that means we've got a limit to how much we want to actually rotate it. So we, we want to go to somewhere around there and the same in the opposite direction, somewhere around there. So the points above here, we can manipulate, but all of these we've got to leave alone because they still they need to remain in a circular configuration. So we can't touch those. So if we go back to our point mode and go to our right-hand view, we can start doing a bit of manipulation with the points. Now, I'm going to select these and I'm also going to select these two over here and we've got those then selected at both ends and then it's just simply a case of grabbing a hold of the scale tool and just just manipulating these in to where we think they should be it doesn't have to be a hundred percent accurate really as long as it's near enough it's good enough just move these up to somewhere level with the top point, maybe just below it. And then these two here just do the same. So we'll allow a little bit of an angle on that, but not too much. And that looks good. That looks fine. OK, very nice. So we've got the starts of our carriage. What I'm also going to do, if I go into my polygon mode and we just select the polys on either side. I'm just going to hit D for extrude 
and go, well, let's see if we go to and see what we get. Yeah, I mean, that's fine. That's just made it a little bit wider and that's fine. It's just given us a uh, carriage a little bit of depth. And it also it shows you that we've got this much here then that we can rotate around. So that's fine. That's all looking good. What have we got there? Have we got a bit of a problem? Yeah, we have. Okay, so we've, we've selected too many. Let's just go back. What we need to do is go into our selection tool and say visibles only on this occasion. Just select those two and those two. Everything's good and we can defer extrude again and just put that back in. Great, that's fine. So that all looks good. The next thing we need to think about then is to actually make a copy of this cylinder, drop it underneath, and then in P2 here, I'm gonna just drop it into this circle. And then once again, zero it out. And if we just check to see what we've got, we can see that that's set up in the correct place. So what we can then do, take it out of there, drop it under the cylinder, select both of them, and then current uh, connect objects and delete. And that gives us one object and that's what we want. And then from now on, we can actually start manipulating this into something that resembles a carriage. The way to do it, if we just select, let's have a look, we want to yeah, go into our selection tool and then we'll select everything on this face and do the same over here. Hold down shift and just select everything on this face. Make sure we've got that last point there. And then we can say MB for bridge and bridge between there and there. Not quite right, so let's just choose a different point to do our bridge. I'd like to go from the middle actually. Just zoom in a tad so I can do this more easily. If I can just select the midpoint, that's got the midpoint, and then just go to the middle there. And that's better, that gives us a better result. So if you get that twist in it, just go from the midpoint and you'll find that it should sort itself out. That's okay. The only thing I don't like about it is that it perhaps needs a step and we need to just drop this down. So what I'm gonna do, I'll undo the bridge. And instead of doing that first, what I'll do is just do D for extrude again. And this time we'll go just, I think one centimeter. Let's see if that works. Yeah, and I think that will work because what we're gonna do is manipulate this so that it's, it just comes below this level. We can possibly even go two, but I think one should be enough actually for now. I, I, I don't know, no, I tell you what, I will go two just to be sure because then with, when this rotates, I want it, I don't want it crashing into anything down here. So I think two is gonna be better. Well, another thing I'll also do is select the endpoints. I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna, yeah, I'll, I'll just do that now, I'll just select the endpoints. If I select here, and again, I can just do D for extrude and apply that. And then I can do the same the other end. Let's just select all of these. D for extrude. Okay, and the whole thing is now ready. And now we can go back and do that bridge between the two parts. Right, so we can reselect all of these. And these. And then MB again, work from the middle across to there. And now we've got it, we've got it all sorted out. Okay, and that looks good. We can now go back to manipulating our points. So let's see where we are. Okay. Yeah, okay. So we zoom in a little bit on here. What we want to do is actually select some points around here and just move them downwards. So let's get our select tool 
And what we'll do is go into view, front view. So we can, it's function four to select our front view. And if we just move these points, in fact, I can take that off again now so that we can select these. We'll select these two. Hold down shift and select those. And the same thing the other end. Select those and select those. Let's just go into our front view, make sure we've got this absolutely correct. Yeah, it looks, it looks good to me. And then all we've got to do is move them downwards. So let's see where we are and then just move these down. And we've got them in the correct place. And that's good because there's enough gap between here and here so that when this is going around the corners, it shouldn't touch. It really shouldn't touch. I mean, if it does, we can always do some more manipulation, but it looks as if it's going to be OK. So now we're on the way. We, we're getting what we, we, we actually want from our carriages. And we've got to think about doing a little bit of extra work because we've got to extrude this front portion out slightly as well, which would be effectively where the doors are to get into the carriage. That's what we've got to do there. I'll just switch to polygon mode and grab a hold of my selection tool, check visible only, and then we can start doing some work. So we'll just grab this here. That's that. Take a look at the other end. Hold down shift and select these. OK, great. And we're ready to do some more work on this. We can then hit D for extrude. 10, we'll try going, let's try going 12, see if that works. Let's see what we get. Well, we can see it could go a little bit further than that, actually. So if we go 14. I think 14 should do it. I think that will be OK because it will leave a gap between the two. And that would be OK because normally you would have like a concertina piece in that would join the two carriages together. But I'm not going to put that piece in, but we'll leave a gap so that it could be put in if needs be. Another thing we need to think about, I think, is raising the height of the, um, the carriage a bit. So if we go into our right hand view, we can Go back to points mode. Just select the rectangular selection and select all of these points. And then we'll just raise them to somewhere about there. As I say, there's nothing exact about this. It's, as long as it sort of looks the part, it's OK. But that looks good. That looks good. I think I'll settle for that. Oops, just go back to the object there so that we can see it. OK, that's fine. Yeah, I'm going to go with that. I'm happy with that. So the next thing we need to do is to place a null object in the scene, drop it into the circle again and zero it out. And now that's in the correct place to be rotated and we can then drop our carriage take it out of there and drop our carriage into it. And now if we select the null and we rotate it, we know that it's in the correct place to be rotated, but also it's in the correct place to actually look at this circle, which is going to need to do. So we can select our null and we'll call it C1 for carriage one. It's really carriage four though, but we'll call it C1. It's, it is the, the well, it, it's not even C1. What it really is, is L1, because it's gonna be the loco ultimately, but we'll say C1 for now. And we'll give this a target tag. Or rather, no, we won't. Actually, I'm gonna leave that for now. I'm gonna do a bit more work before I go there. So we'll call that C1 for now, and it is in the correct place, and that's nice. What I will do is copy it and I'll move what I've copied 
In fact, what I'm going to need to do, looking at this, yeah, I'm going to take that out of there. And this needs to be 90 degrees because it must look along its Z axis because it will have to have a target expression. And of course, it's going to be used tangentially along a spline. So it needs to be in that plane. And we'll do the same with this one. Just take that cylinder out of there and make that 90. Oops, not that. I'm going to make that 90. That's fine. OK, great. And then we can just drop these back in. So it doesn't really matter which one goes in which one at the moment because they're both in exactly the same place. But that's going to be called C2 for now. I'm going to change the name of it once I've manipulated it. But we'll just move it out of the way. Just push it over here. And that's fine. And what we'll do also is copy. Yeah, I'm going to copy this again. Call it C3. Now let's see where we are. No, it's fine. That's absolutely fine. I was just thinking I was going to have to manipulate that again, but I don't think I will. Right, so I've got those two in place. I'm just going to move this one out of the way for a minute and then start doing some work with these two. So, yeah, this one is going to be the front locomotive. So we'll select this and this one is going to be the rear locomotive. OK, that's fine. So let's just go into our polygon mode again. This time we need to select the, just this here and we're going to move it forward. In fact, what we'll do, we'll do that mathematically so that we can do both of them exactly the same. Let's just go into our coordinates. So that what we've got to do here. Can we do this mathematically? I don't know whether we can or not, actually. It doesn't really matter, I suppose, if we can't. But if we just put, hold down our shift key, we can move 5, 10, 15, 20. And that will be fine for that. So that's our, our front loco created there. And with our rear loco, we'll just do the same. So we'll select this, come into here, select this, hold down our shift key. Let's not going to do that. Hold down our shift and move this 5, 10, 15, 20. And that gives us two, two locos. Okay, that's great, that's fine. Now, the finishing touches with all of this involves placing our cylinders here. They need to be placed into a subdivision surface. So we'll hold down the Option key and place them. And that's placed that one in there, and that's already looking quite nice. We'll do the same with the locos. So that one, oops, don't want to do that, it's a cloner. Um, hold that down, place that in there, that's looking nice. And the same with this one. Hold that command or hold option down and click on there. OK, looking really, really good. Need to do a bit more manipulation, but that's fine. We can do that right now. So if we zoom in, we see where we are. We need to do some work. So let's just see what we've got. So with C1 here, we can go into edge mode this time. And UL for loop selection and select these loops. Just turn that around and then select this one. And then we can just hold down our full stop key and click and drag. And that brings them back to a nice shape. And that looks good. I like that. And the same with these. Still with the loop selection. And again, hold down the full stop key, click and drag. And then now looking really nice. They're, they're the correct sort of shape. So that's our carriage done. And now we've got to do the same thing with the locos. So if we get a hold of the back one, might as well do them all at the same time. OK, that's all of those selected. Click and drag, done it looking really good 
and finally this one and that's it that's done those and they all look really nice we can do some more work with the locos I mean if we want we can get a hold of um, so let's we'll see what we've got yeah we can probably get a hold of this loop here and drag that up uh, manipulate that up if we wish to so something like that it's, it's okay it looks all right it's not too bad like that um the only other thing i'm just thinking about is can we do any more work with this just to make it that bit more interesting uh, maybe we could probably tighten this i think i tightened that before probably took it to a somewhere near where it needs to go in fact what i probably did I, I, in fact what i will do i'll tighten that to there and then i'll put a knife cut through it so kl for a knife cut and then just put a knife cut through there and then what i can do is ul again select the outer and then i can just release that slightly so that there's a little bit of roundedness on it and that looks really nice i think and the same here if we just do kl and go through there that should give us something quite nice there i think as well just just rounds it off slightly which is quite nice i quite like that yeah well that's good I, i'll do that and leave it at that i think for now and then we can do exactly the same thing with the other one just go in here if we get a hold of that go uh, UL, select that one, bring it in, KL, tiny little cut through it, UL again, and then hold down option and just, or rather full stop I should say, and then just release that slightly, KL, put a little cut through there, and that looks good. Yeah, I'm going to go with that, I like that. That's looking really nice. Okay, so we've got those done and they're ready to go. So now we can think about putting all of these into the correct places within the the actual train and on, on so that we get two locos and four carriages. So that's the next port of call for us. One thing I will do just on this loco is just select that one. UL and I'll select this here and I'm just going to release that slightly that's better that's nice that gives it that roundedness it's, it's almost like the mallard we kind of like a modern day mallard <laughs> kind of reminds me of that but that's nice that's a nice look so it gives it a nice rounded look through here and then we've got this here yeah that's that's great so both the locomotives look like that now great fantastic so that's done and uh, we're ready now to move on one thing I do need to do, I just want to check where I've got my subdivision surfaces because they may not be in the right place. They're not because they need to be placed where our circles are or where our, our nulls are. So we'll take just take the cylinders out of those for a minute and then we can zero them out. And that gets them into the correct places. And that's fine. And then we can drop our cylinders back in. Just make sure that they're in the correct places as well. Probably they need to move back very slightly on the Z axis. But they should be OK on the X axes so we'll leave them as they are should be fine yeah that should be okay because the cylinders they can be in it doesn't matter where their axes are that's not a problem okay that's great so moving on from here we can think about making the remainder of our carriages before we do that, let's just make sure that we know what's what. So this needs to be RL. 
for rear loco and this FL for front loco so that we know where those two are. And what I'm going to do is just place that one above C1 and we'll leave this one where it is. And then we can copy this twice more or three times more and then rename them. And C4. Okay. And what I'll do actually, I will put them in order because obviously C1 follows the front loco. So they're ready and they're 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 ready to be placed. So what we can do is group them into another null and call these carriages and the ampersand for that and locos. So we've got carriages and locos there and they're all ready to be placed. In order to place them we need to give each of these an align to spline tag for a start. We won't put anything in there just yet because we've got to sort that out. So we need our path spline here. We need to copy this and we'll call this C path for carriages and this one B path for bogies. Now our C path needs to move. It needs a different height. Now if we select our carriages and logos, this is the height that it needs to be set to, which is 27.287. So we'll select our C path and we'll paste that value in there. Hit return and now it's at the correct height. And we can check that if we go into our front view and select our loco. And we can see that that's going to travel along that spline. It's exactly right. So that's perfectly good. Moving on from here, the next thing we need to create is the path that will create the, tilt, the actual tilt mechanism. Because this will follow our path spline here tangentially, but it can use the X axes here to actually look at another spline. And that's how we're going to create the tilt mechanism. So in order to do that, what we need to do is come into our rails here and we need to copy the inner spline. So we'll command drag to copy that up and we'll call this C rail. Place it up there. Now at the moment, what, I'm, what I'll do actually, I'll set its height Again, I'll just paste that value in there and set its height. Now, at the moment, this is going from white to blue. We can see that quite obviously. But if we select our C path, it's the opposite. So our C rail, the point order needs to be changed for a start. So let's go into our point order and say reverse sequence. Now that doesn't appear to have changed, does it? It's still blue over here. So let's just zoom out and see what's going on. Aha. But here it is white. And this is where the point, or well, the weather spline this, on this point is where it starts. So its start point isn't correct. Its start point needs to be over here. So if we select that point and we come into our spline and say point order, set first point, now we've got it correct. So if we select our C path, we've got blue to white and our rail path or our rail, we've got blue to white and we know that our points are starting at the same place. So that's great, that's sorted that out and it's all ready to go. So we can now say that we want each of these to be, well we can, we can also tick tangenti or check that box because that gives us our rail path as well then. So we can say C path for the actual spline that we're going to follow. And we can say C rail for our second spline. And we're going to do some work with the rail in order to make it create the tilt, but we won't do that just yet. So that's great. That's got it set up so far. And the next thing we need to do now is reach for Expresso again and continue building this expression. Not much more to do, but that's the next port of call. The first thing I need to do is command click and drag to copy this modulo. And I can plumb 
the output from the object index into input 1. Instead of being modulo 2, it needs to be modulo 6 because we've got six, well, we've got two locos and four carriages, so we've got six carriages technically, and that's what I can say. We also need to copy this divide, so again, I'll hold down my command key and click and drag to copy this, and plumb the output of the modulo into the input one. All we need to do is divide whatever this number happens to be, I've got 180, yours may be slightly different, but what you need to do here is divide that number by two, so 90 needs to go in there. Moving on from here, we need to think about what we're going to place in the scene next. Well, what we've got are these here to bring in. And what we need to do to do that is to create a linked list. So we've got our linked list here. We can plumb the modulo output into the linked list or into the index value of the linked list, the index input. And then we can populate our linked list. So we can select all of these and populate it. We then need to get another tag iterator. We'll bring that one in, plumb these into the input there. And once again, I'm just going to say align to spline in there. We then need another add node so we'll click and drag with the command key held down to copy that one and we can plumb the position into the input there or in fact we can we can plumb it into there because this divide has got to be plumbed into here move these two over here and then finally we just need to bring in another align to spline give it an object port and also a position port and we can plug the tag into the object port and the add into the position port and bingo we've got our train all set up perfect absolutely super duper and now what we can do if we start playing around with uh, the positions of our, well, in fact, we need to we go into our Expresso and we go into our user data, we can actually move this position and our train will follow. And you can see it moves. It's not perfect at the moment because it still needs some more target effectors and things like that put in, but it's, it is working. And that's the, the whole expression now is complete. That's as much Expresso as you need to make this work. It's a very, very elegant expression. I think it's a great expression, this one. I'm really glad to have found this. Brilliant. So that's your Expresso. So you've got your modulo, another divide, which is half the initial one, modulo six, or however many carriages you've got. If you've got eight carriages, it's modulo eight. A linked list with those in there, feeding the tag, a math add, add the, the output of the divide into the position there, and then pass it to the align to spline there. And that's all you need to do, and it's complete. So that's the Expresso part of this done. Now, in order to really make this train work, there are two more things we need to do. We need to add some more target expressions. And then we need to manipulate the rail spline in order to make the train tilt. So they're the last two things that we need to do. And we'll get on with that next. So the next thing I'm going to do is take a look at the circles which are in the even platforms and change their names because these are going to be targets. What we need to do, this, the null here needs to be looking at this circle. That's important because that way the train will be, or the carriages I should say, will be glued to the bogies correctly as they would need to be. And of course they would need to be fixed to them in real life and follow them when the thing goes around the corner because you don't want the carriages to continue going straight. You want them to actually look at the front bogey in order to make them follow the correct path. So I'm going to call this T1, so target one. And then I'll come down into my next even numbered platform here, and I'm going to call this T2. This one 
we'll just open that and call this T3. T4. T5. And finally, T6. Technically, if you wished to, don't have to, but in the odd ones, you could throw these circles away now if you wanted to. They don't necessarily need to be left in there. I'm going to leave them in. It doesn't really make a lot of odds. But that's my target set up. So what I can do is give this a target tag. Put it after the align to spline. It doesn't really matter, I don't suppose, but we'll, we'll do that. And we'll say that we want to look at T1. And that should work fine. So if we just do a quick test on that, if I get my Espresso and I just move this, I should find, yep, yeah, it's actually following it. When it goes around that curve, you can see that it's actually looking in the correct way. You can, it's not staying straight. It's looking at the, at the bogey that's in front of it as it goes around the, as around the curve. That's what it needs to do. Okay, so fantastic, that is going to work. So with all of these then, we can give them target tags and then systematically we can work through them. And uh, well, that's not very good, is it? <laughs> it doesn't really matter the order, but I just, you know, I prefer to do it with the targets after the align to splines. But we'll select all of these and start work with them. Let's just give me one of those down there. And we'll start to do what we need to do. So we know that carriage four is gonna be looking at T2. And we'll, we can close these up as we do them, actually. So we, we close our first bogey, our second bogey, and our third, because we're not using that one. We've got T2 selected, so that's done. We can close up B5. This one needs to be T3. Close that one up, close that one up. This needs to be T4. Close that one and that one. This one needs to be T5. And finally, this one needs to be T6. And we can close all of that up. And now what we should find is if we use the Espresso, yeah, they're all gonna follow that curve. You can see they're all following it as they go around the corner. Fantastic, so that bit of it's working really nicely. The next thing we need to do then is to start working with our C rail here. And we need to start playing around with points in order to make the thing tilt when it goes around corners. So that's our next port of call. Let's just go into our top view and hit H so that we can see everything. And we can see where we're going to need to start work with this spline. Now we start to curve here, 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 and by the time we're here, we're out of the curve. So if we select these three points, and then come into our front view. Let's just move out a little bit so that we can see where we are. I don't know whether this is the best view or not, but we'll, well, it's, yeah, it's okay. It's not too bad a view, is it? So what we'll do is just move these points downwards and I'll just bring that back up a little bit and select the middle one now and drop that just a little bit further. Now that should, hopefully start to make the train move in the correct way. Let's just see what happens when we play around with the Espresso. Yeah, it does. It, well, it's, it's too exaggerated. It's making the train tilt. But you can see that, it, in fact, it's a good thing that I did it as much as I did because it's, it's too exaggerated. So what we need to do, we'll go back into our spline, our C rail. And we can bring these points up a bit. So if we just manipulate these through, not that last one, I don't want that. Let's just take those off. It's these three, it's just going to view two, make sure, I've, or top view, I should say. No, it's not quite right, is it? It's, it's that one, that one, and that one. They're the ones we're really interested in. So let's go back into that view that we were in, and then just bring these back up. So you, you can see that you've got to be quite subtle with it at times. There are certain times when you might want the train to lean quite a lot, 
but other times when you only want it to be quite subtle. So if we just do that now, yeah, that's better, isn't it? That's that's more like it. It's a short, a, a shallower sort of curve, so it's not making it tilt an enormous amount, but it's it is tilting. It possibly it's still too much actually. Um, what we can do, just go back into our rail, and we can just adjust this here so that we can sort of see what what we're doing. Yeah, I mean perhaps it just wants to be. Let's just see if we can do this so that we can move them. I don't know whether we can move them. No, we can't. That relates to the whole spline. Unfortunately, we can't do that as points. But we've got to be, you've got to be a bit careful how you do it because you don't want to go too mad with this. I would say that might be all right, actually. Let's have a look. Let's just move that. It's, yeah, it gets to there. It's tilting quite a lot. And then it's coming out of the tilt. Yeah, I would say that's okay. So that's the first curve done. Let's just take a look at where we're going next. Right, we're here, aren't we? We've got to put a little bit of a curve on this. So let's go down into our C rail again and take a look at what we've got. So it's going to be these three points. And this is even shallower, so we don't want to go mad here at all. We want to move a tiny fraction, really. So let's have a look, see what we've got. If we just change our navigation so that we go into center mode. Will it work? Not really. Let's have a look. Uh, cursor mode might be better to use. I don't know. Sometimes it is. Not really, is it? Let's go back into object mode. And try and move around. C rail. Okay, not too bad. It's better than it was. <laughs> it's not the ideal thing for navigation though, because it's it's a little bit uh, a little bit of a big scene, I guess. Right, let's see where we are here with our points. Can't really see from that view, so let's just change the view. H, go in, and there we are. Now we can see a bit better. If we come in quite close, what we can probably do is just drop them down. A very very small amount I mean it probably might only want to go that much and then we can probably move that point and the other point and just zoom in a little bit more and they can probably move up a little bit I, I think just a tiny fraction something like that it's very very subtle that but it's It'll just make the train tilt a, a little bit. That's as much as we really want. So let's have a look. I'll just manipulate that through. Yeah, it, it is a tiny, it's a subtle amount. You can see that it is tilting, but only a very subtle amount now. And that's fine. We want the subtlety. There, that's all right. That's looking good. And then once it gets to the next curve, it's got to start tilting the other way. So let's get a hold of our rail again see where we are we're starting to go here here and here let's just see where we are there that's fine so we've got those select selected now the thing is it's got to go the other way so what we need to do is actually raise these so we need to push them upwards not too much it's only a very subtle amount again because it's it's only going to be a very subtle tilt and then we can select this one and this one and just move them down slightly something like that and let's see what that does to it so we'll just bring this in here now we can see that really nicely from that angle so let's just bring that through and yep you can see it's going back the other way so it snakes around there and it goes back the other way and even that might be a little bit too much on that tilt but you know you can set this up to your own taste uh, you know make sure it works for you let's have a look see if we've got any issues with this at all I don't think we have no it's just tilting over very nicely it's on the bogey yeah looking really nice that's a really nice action that we've got on there and it's okay it's not going too far so yeah I mean as I say you can set this up however you like but uh, you know you might wish to go into your points and move them slightly more so let's just go back go into our rail spline again we might just want to move those down a little bit 
select that one as well and just move them down so that it's so that it's really subtle you know and that it doesn't go too far so if I go again it's just yeah I mean I would say that's probably better for that curve it's, it is moving but not much and that's fine because it's only a very slight curve but yeah that looks good so this is what you've got to do I won't do all of the track because again I'm not going to bore you senseless but what I'll do I'll cut the video here I'll set the track up and then we'll start putting some cameras in so that we can see what's going on so I'll just by the magic of editing once again I'll start uh, I'll start doing all of this and come back to you when I've done it okay And I think, just select our loco there. Take that a bit lower so that we can see what we're doing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm liking what I'm seeing there. That's just our last bend set up there. Yeah, that looks really nice. It's uh, it's come out really well. That's an interesting shot. A bit of a hero shot. Yeah, I'm liking it. Okay, it's all set up. Great, so we can now think about bringing in some cameras and just seeing what this looks like. Now, if I just switch into my cameras here, I've got a stage object and I've got cameras. I'm going to copy these from here. Go back into my scene and paste them into it and switch on my scene objects. Now let's have a look, see what I've got here. Uh, let's have a glue. If we go back to quite know what I've got set up let's have a look let's just see what it does where are we we're in the top view I've got my scene object if I just display my cameras here right they're all set up the only th camera that I don't need let's have a look which cameras which so that's camera one two is round the corner okay camera six Right, camera six just needs to be set up correctly. So if we go into our coordinates here and we just set this up, we can put that flat and we can set this up at minus 90. And we can also move it so that it's in front of the train. Let's have a look, see where we are. It's not quite in the right place. Let's just zoom in a little bit if we can move it in so that it's just in front of the train and it's probably not quite at the right height let's just zero that out that looks good it's not a bad starting place right so let's just hide the cameras and let's see what happens we'll set this up as geometry only in playback and let's see what happens okay so we cut to there and we see our train going around the bend there very nicely snaking around there which all looks good around the next bend around there that's nice and cinematic and then we come back in here and move across Right, so it's not quite in the right place at the end. So what I'll do, if we just move that camera back a bit. And now we're taking in the scene pretty well. I think we can leave it there. So yeah, I mean, that's how you go about doing this. That does complete the tutorial. Uh, that's how you go about setting up a train to race around a track and tilt as it does so. It's quite simple but it's the espresso really that's the uh, the sort of hero of the day here that's that's a, a brilliant expression for doing this and I was surprised at how simple this actually is because it's not a particularly complex expression I thought it would be much much more difficult to actually make this happen I was thinking there's going to be Python involved and various other things but no no need for that at all you can do it all with espresso align to spline tags and target tags in the right places and you've got it all set up yeah, so that about completes this one. I really hope you've enjoyed doing it as much as I've enjoyed bringing it to you. It's been an awful lot of fun doing this one uh, and it's come out great. So have a go at creating your own project, see what you can come up with. Maybe you can come up with a roller coaster ride that uh, 
uses a similar technique. I mean, why not? It, you can apply it to a roller coaster ride. But uh, that about brings the curtain down on this one. So as always, I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and that you've got a lot out of it. And if you have, then please like the video. And if you haven't already, then please subscribe to the channel. And of course, leave a comment and ring the bell. And wherever you happen to be on social media, please, please share this video because all of this good stuff really does help the channel keep on moving in the right direction. But anyway, that about wraps this one up. So I'll see you very soon on the next tutorial.